I, I want to move on to the, the other specialty that you are kind of known for that you, that you work on is, is marriage. And there's marriages, of, there's a lot of issues with marriage, right? Um, but I, I want to talk from the context and we'll, we'll try to like, it was, I'll let you illustrate the sister's perspective as best as possible, but I want to be straight up here from the guy's perspective, religious brothers that like, we're all friends with Alhamdulillah and you know, whether it's me growing up in Ohio or, you know, Sheikh Amr and Sims crew here in Chicago, all these guys, you know, we all from, we, we are, you know, got in, into the Dean We've always like avoided like dating and stuff like that, and then we get into college, and you know I remember back in the day it was always all about remember college. So I was like, yeah, man, I'm getting, I gotta get married, man, I gotta get married, <laughs> you know. And as as dudes, like there's only one reason you're trying to get married because you're, you're trying to get laid. Yeah, you know how long context. Halal sucks. Yeah, hello, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, you don't know anything else about it, but you know, you told him he can say whatever he wants, so to get ready, you know. So like, <laughs> and, and and a lot of it is like because in you know, and the reality is that it's like, and we've seen. You know, and this happens for the sisters too. I've heard sisters like they grew up watching Bollywood movies and they think their husband's gonna be like Shah Rukh Khan or some dude, you know, some like good looking guy, you know. And as good guys, we we watch mo- like random movies, but there's always like random sex scenes and stuff, and it looks awesome. And then you get married and like, man, this is whack. <laughs> 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 this, this, this is how it looks like. <laughs> this, this, this is how it's supposed to be. And then like, and, and then you, you would talk to some guys who are like been married for a few years, and they're like, yeah, man, I gotta negotiate with my wife every time. It's like maybe once a month. And then you, from the sister's perspective, it's like, well, my husband, he, he's out of shape and fat now. And, you know, he don't do no chores around the house. I'm not attracted to him no more. <laughs> and then, like, you, 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 got, you, got this, and you, you got this vicious cycle here. And, you know, the husband's, you know, because I don't know how, I don't know how girl, when girls are growing up, you know, I don't know what their mindset is towards marriage. Because, like, they're obviously agreeing they married some dude when they're 23. So there's probably, they probably feel there's some incentive there. And guys, straight up, we're just we're, you know, hey, you know, we 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 trying to get it on, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then when you get married, and then like that last six months to a year, or whatever, depending on how long your honeymoon phase is, and then it just like dies, you know, and then you got you, you throw kids to the mix, and then you know, <laughs> you know, it it, it it just and then you got this whole social pressure from what you hear in the media, this and that, you grow, it's in your head. You know how, of how we should be. Like we were joking the other day about like how there there should be some kind of quota that we, that you know it should be part of the prenup or something. Like the wife's got to put out at least twice a week, or it ain't happening. You know what I mean? And then we talk, and then like we asked Mashaik about it. Like, well, isn't the woman supposed to submit to the husband? I'm like, yeah, but if you keep pushing this, this this could be rape. I'm like, what for real? I, I want to get out the god. This is what the brothers are saying in our community. The practicing brothers, we're complaining because wait, wait, what do you mean we, man? It's the field sales. <laughs> well, sh- 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 Amr, Sheikh Amr's got it on lock. Alhamdulillah. But like ninety five percent, the rest of us, you know, we got issues, man. Like, how do we, how do we, get, how do we tackle this? What's going on here? Quite the venting that was. <laughs> <laughs> My wife does not listen to our podcast. What, what for the exactly? Most part. What exactly do you want to tackle? A more frequent, satisfying sexual life? Yes, exactly. Let's start there. Okay. <laughs> well, um, you know, but before we do that, I think you know, let's talk about the prevention, right? Prevent, uh, preventive, preventive me- measures. Um, what's happening often is what I call microwavable marriages, right? It heats up fast, but it you know it cools down very quick, and Basically, many of us, like you said, men and women, we have unhealthy and immature narratives about what marriage is, what love is, and we create these, you know, unrealistic expectations. And of course, our suffering and letdown is proportionate to those unrealistic expectations. And I hear this from both sides, right? But here's here's a nice analogy. Um, you know, when men want to get married, they want a garden which they can go and put some seeds into, right? And once they get married, they're like, woohoo, I've got this, you know, blank patch of awesome soil. You know, they're beautiful, they're fair skinned, they're whatever, you know, the checklist that my parents made sure I followed was fulfilled. And here's my patch. And then we go and we, when we put the seed in, um, and then we keep coming back and we're wondering why it's all just soil. Mm. It's something that has to be nurtured. Love is not something you find, ladies and gentlemen. There is no love corner or object, you know. Love is something you have to grow. And so you need to water it. It needs sunlight. It needs proper care. You see, this is not, it's not some magical sparkling formula. 
that just like, well, where is it now? Like, what happened? Oh, I guess I'm not in love anymore. Let's get a divorce or let's start emotionally cheating with the guy or the secretary at the office. And eventually, oh, brothers, oh, I'm just going to get another wife, man. That's going to solve everything, right? Even though you don't even know how to handle one, right? So what's going on? And that's exactly where I try to come in is we don't know basic things about gender psychology. You know, what are the top needs of men and women, you know, generally speaking, right? There's a bell curve. Um, so these are the things I ask people, you know, when they're like, oh, I'm ready to get married. And it's like, okay, what are the top needs of women? I don't know. So how are you ready to get married? Because getting ready to have sex is not the same thing as get, getting ready to, ha- uh, to be married. In fact, we all know, us married brothers, that having sex is an extremely small percentage of most of the hours you put into a family, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And so I always say we spend a ton of money and energy planning the wedding party and how we're going to show off to our communities. You know, not everybody, but I'm, again, talking about the unhealthy themes. Uh, but we don't spend a dime in the actual relationship. A lot of guys will, will actually say that sex is actually just a, a biological trap built into men to uh, to get married or to be with women or else they would never be want to be around women in general. Is, is that <laughs> is that some, uh, something that you hear often or... Well, I, I mean, I definitely believe, and so one of the things I, I, oft, I offer clients is this model of healthy masculinity and the yin and yang, you know, bringing back the yin and yang in marriages. And I believe that the feminine powers uh, is a beautiful phenomenon, and there's a lot of wonderful traits there. And perhaps it's one of the reasons why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you know, there are three things of this world that's so beloved to him. What are they, gentlemen? Uh, scent, honey, and woman. Right. I think sajda, the seeing people in sajda besides the honey, but yes, women, right? And so, what did he mean by that, right? And we know that it's not just oh, because women are are beautiful um, creatures that we're attracted to, but it's also because of the qualities that they have as beings, which is very beautiful because they do represent a lot of um, powerful themes and kind of the gift of life uh, that we also recognize in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim are the dominant names of God. He could have, you know, used different names at the beginning of, of the surahs of the Quran, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to use Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. There's no Bismillah Al-Kareem Al-Majid, right? And so there, there's something to it, right? Raham and Womb. You know, it's there's a connection there to this idea of the feminine power is the life giving force. It's a nurturing force. It's the egg, you know, of of families and, and families are the cells of society. And what's sad is today, you know, a lot of women feel like if they are just a housewife or a mother, that this is just, you know, there's no value, right? And and modern society kind of craps on this. And it's really disappointing because I sometimes, when sisters call me for some advice or something, they're like, I'm like, so what do you do, sister? You know, how do you serve the world? She's like, oh, I'm just a house mom or I'm just a mother. I'm like, don't say that, you know, have have integrity. And, you know, you you are very honorable. You know, don't, right. don't look at it as like you're pathetic because you're just, you know, you're not working full time, right? And so, you know, I, I think that we just have a lot of um, skewed ideas about what it means to be, you know, a man and a woman today. And uh, this, as Muslims, it's even more sophisticated because, A, we've got all the kind of postmodern constructs surrounding us in Western society. And then we have the very Eastern, you know, values and customs, which some of them are valuable and, and healthy and good, and some of them are not. So we're kind of dealing with all of these uh, different uh, influences, which I think a lot of people are just coming down to it they're just confused on right. what it means to be whatever you know a man and a woman and we know that nowadays it's like you know we're even taught when i was studying psychology it's like okay your biology your sex is uh you know biological but um your gender role is something that you can just choose and make up and decide later right, right. and it can be totally contrary to your physiological makeup mm. so we're just living in an age where all these things are no longer clear Right. And I think that like any of us, we Muslims, we, we go to we always go to these nice schools for the most part. We, we try to you know go to the best of the best and we don't realize we're going to be indoctrinated by many of these concepts and values, whether we like it or not. And if we've never had good talks with our parents or guidance around you know what it means to be in a marriage, how, what does it mean to you know understand male and female psychology? It's just you know, bismillah, they're a doctor, they come from our country, they speak our language. 
and uh, go ahead. Let's throw a nice uh, party and, and make it happen, and, and good luck.